So last night, uh, Republicans in the Senate voted to confirm Amy Coney Barrett to be the next Supreme Court justice. Uh, if you guys have been listening to the show for a while, this should come as no surprise. The day after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, I was very clear that this is exactly what was going to happen. Trump and the Republicans were going to ram through another Supreme Court in record time. Um, they don't care how much it makes them look like hypocrites. And the Democrats were going to put up uh, some weak, feckless, so-called opposition. And in the end, it would be useless. And Amy Com Coney Bear would be on the Supreme Court before the election. That's exactly what happened. But still, there's a lot to be said about this. Um, even though um, I'm sure a lot of the focus that you see in mainstream media and from regular people talking about this on social media, uh, a lot of the focus is on social issues like uh, abortion rights and LGBT rights and um, racial discrimination and stuff like that. And I do think those are important. I don't think that will be nearly the biggest impact or the biggest uh, the biggest areas that the Amy Coney Barrett and the rest of the Supreme Court is going to be ruling on over the next few decades. The issue of, of corporate power is going to be is an issue that's in the courts often. And Amy Coney Barrett, just like basically all, all the other justices on the Supreme Court, reliably rule on the side of corporate power in some of these major cases. And I'll get into her record. Uh, you guys have already heard about this before. Her biggest case while she was a federal judge was uh, something that she ruled on recently where she decided Grubhub, uh, the, the drivers can't demand a minimum wage from Grubhub and they also can't uh, sue them for the overtime that the company owes them. So corporate tool like the rest of them. So I'll get into that later. Also get into how the Democrats, I mean, of course, to us, they shit the bed, but to them, it doesn't really matter whether or not she got confirmed because they're just going to campaign on it anyway. And I'll get to that. Also, some bad takes from people on the left and new media making this out to be some doomsday scenario and all hope is lost for the left and all of that. I don't agree with that either. Um, some points, it, it's I agree that obviously uh, Amy Coney Barrett being put on the Supreme Court is not a win for the left. It does not help our cause in any way. I'm not arguing that. But I don't think that we should just throw our hands up and say, oh, well, the Supreme Court stacked and that's the end of the discussion. We can never get any left-wing policies. I, I just don't agree with that. And I'll get into that later. But first, like you guys know, you know the deal. Um, I need help from the audience to help make this show sustainable. I want to focus on making more content for you guys, better content for you guys. And in order to do that, I need to be making some kind of money from the show. Um, and so if you guys can in the audience can help out with that, I would greatly appreciate it. I have the links to my Patreon account in the about page on the YouTube channel. Also have um, link to my PayPal account. If you would, if you feel more comfortable with a one-time contribution, also, I'm doing a partnership with uh, this company called Mask Up, where if you click the special link that they give me, that's also in the about page of my YouTube channel, and you purchase a uh, mask from the website, I get a 20% commission. So they sell the reusable cloth masks. They're about $17. And yeah, we have to wear them inside anyway. So if you're looking to purchase a mask, do it from Mask Up, and I get 20% commission. Back to the latest Supreme Court justice. So there are a lot of negatives and downsides to Amy Coney Barrett being put on the Supreme Court. And we'll get to those in a little bit. But I want to address maybe the only upside to her being put on the court. And in, in this, this clownish fashion by uh, the Republicans in the Senate and Donald Trump. So... There's this mythology here in the United States that the courts are above politics. These are just neutral jurors who have been placed in these positions of, of on the courts. Uh, and 
their they their opinion has no uh bearings on their case they listen to everything on the merit and they they judge accordingly based off of uh a sincere interpretation of the law and there is no ideology that factors into their decisions at all that's bullshit if you're in my audience and you're listening to this show and you you follow politics you know that's bullshit but between this latest Amy Coney Barrett confirmation and and the confirmation of Neil Gorsuch back in 2017, I don't think I've ever seen such a naked power grab when it comes to uh, basically trying to stack the courts in my lifetime. And like I said, hopefully this just blows up the facade that the courts aren't political. In this specific case of Amy Coney Barrett, the decision to confirm her was already made before they even knew who the the of the nominee was going to be. The that, it might have been the night of that Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. Mitch McConnell came out very publicly. He was like, "Yep, we got the courts to. I mean, we got the the votes in the Senate to uh, confirm another Supreme Court justice by the election, and that's exactly what we're going to do." Again. Nobody even knew who the nominee was going to be. Nobody vetted the nominee. Nobody. There was no uh, uh, in-depth uh, uh, investigation in her judicial record and seeing how uh, uh, well she follows the Constitution and the letter of the. None of that. That wasn't a. That only wasn't that the main factor in in whether or not she would be confirmed. That wasn't a consideration at all because, like I said, Mitch Mahano was saying, the night of Ruth Bader Ginsburg death, we already have the votes. So it didn't matter if it was Amy Coney Barrett. It didn't matter if it was uh, Merrick Garland. It didn't matter if it was a fucking lamppost. All that mattered was it was somebody that somebody from the, the list of the, the Federalist Society's approved corporate approved judges was going to be picked by the White House and that person was going to be confirmed, regardless of their record, regardless of any questionable decisions that they've made, regardless of any questionable ideology they have, they were going to be confirmed because that's what the donors wanted. And then, of course, that is exactly what happened. Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed last night. And another part of it that just blows up this whole myth that the courts are, are supposed to, the judges on the courts, they're, all, they're objective, they're above politics, the ideology that doesn't factor into their decisions. And, and only the, the most qualified judges get on the court. I mean, just look at the, the dark money campaign to get her confirmed. Just and and it's not again. This is something that isn't unique to Amy Coney Barrett, but it was just uh, again very brazen. The same thing with with Neil Gorsuch and and uh, Brett Kavanaugh. You have anonymous millionaires and corporations putting tens of millions of dollars into an effort to see the judge. Now, at face value. That's sketchy as hell, and it looks like somebody's trying to buy a, a, a judicial seat, and it looks like that because that's exactly what they're doing. They're not spending tens of millions of dollars uh, uh, in campaign donations and in ad in uh, all these ads um, pushing for Amy Coney Barrett to get on the Supreme Court. They're not doing that for charity. They're not doing that for their health. They're doing that because they expect to get something in return, and what they expect to get is, like I said a goon from the Federalist Society's list of approved judges is going to get that seat. And then when the time comes, she is going to almost always rule on the side of, of conservatives and corporate power in this country. That's that's just what it is. So it's as close to quid pro quo as you can get legally. Um, it's I mean, we've basically legalized bribery in this country, so it fits into that category. And again, it just blows up this whole myth that the only people who get on the, the courts are people who are qualified and objective and, and have a, a spotless record. All of that is bullshit. It's just whoever the donors are, are most approve of. And that's really the only qualification to get on, on the court. And so, so let's talk about uh, uh, her record for a little bit. Now, she hasn't been... Uh, federal judge for too long it's only been a couple years i think 
so she doesn't have a, a lengthy record to go through. But the decisions that that she's made, the rulings that she's made in her time on the bench, um, again, it just makes clear where she stands on ideologically, and it's clear why she's on the Federalist Society's list of of approved judges. So her, the the ruling of of the biggest ruling from her that stands out the most to me is like I said that Grubhub case where you have gig workers, these drivers, these delivery drivers who um under normal conditions are basically wage slaves uh and people putting in immense amount of labor and work uh into doing this job for a company but they aren't even classified as official employees they're just uh contractors because of of the this this legal classification that's been set up over the last few years and so because of that classification they aren't entitled to all of the benefits and protections that regular workers get and um some of those protections and benefits being um, you have to be paid a minimum wage. Gig workers, like the drivers at Grubhub, aren't, like I said, they aren't official employees. They're, they're contractors. So they don't, Grubhub does not have to pay them a minimum wage. So they can be working all, um, the amount of hours that they work or are on call compared to the amount of money that they make, a lot of times can be way less than, uh, whatever they would be getting paid if they was getting paid a minimum wage. Sometimes it's around $4 an hour, $6 an hour, or something like that. So, completely unlivable. And then on top of that, you have the issue of them supposed to be getting paid overtime from Grubhub for um, the amount of time that they work a week that's over 40 hours a week. Well, Grubhub said... We're not going to pay you overtime on top of us not paying you a minimum wage. And whatever you get is what you get. And that's it. We're the big bad corporation and nobody's really going to check us on this. So the Grubhub workers, they sued the Grubhub drivers, sued the company. It went to the court. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett was the, the judge on the case. And since the drivers, they signed some sort of contract before they um, start working with Grubhub that says, basically gives up their right to sue the company for any reason, and any complaints that they have has to be dealt in in arbitration, which is really, it is bullshit, and it's some sort, I'm not gonna get too into that because that's not the point of this video, but arbitration, plain and simple, is really just a secret court where that happens internally within a company and the company, the corporation picks the people who decide who's right and who's wrong on the case. So it's rigged from the beginning and they'll almost always side with the corporation. And in this specific case, even though the Grubhub drivers had a rock solid case and on the merits, had Grubhub dead to rights, Amy Coney Barrett tossed the case, um, and and her reasoning was was uh, it should be dealt in arbitration within the company. So she had the opportunity to give a major win to not only those drivers at Grubhub but all gig workers, workers who who work for Lyft and Uber and. Um, Instacart, all these other gig workers, she could have dealt them a major win and sided with them, but instead, like the corporate tool that she is, uh, she up, she up, she did her job, and she upholds uh, uh, and defends corporate power and this ridiculous uh, uh, institution of of private arbitration. And mind you, this case is going on in the middle of, of all that's happening with the coronavirus. And those very same drivers have been put in them, have, oh, their lives are, have been put in danger now because they have to work in the middle of this, this pandemic. They've been working since the height of the pandemic, since it started. And like I said, 
have absolutely no benefits from the, from Grubhub. They aren't even getting paid minimum wage, and they can't even get paid the overtime that they're owed. So I mean, this is a a a, a fight over the bare minimum, the bare minimum that a company should be providing for the people that work for them. And even during these hard times, even still, you have Amy, people like Amy Coney Barrett going to side on, on, on behalf of the corporations and against regular people, against workers. It's disgusting. And basically all of the, the Supreme Court justices, definitely the ones who were picked by conservative Republican presidents, have horrific judicial records. One that comes to mind that's very similar to that case was like with Neil Gorsuch, when um, you had a truck driver in the middle of winter, there was like some sort of blizzard or something, truck breaks down, there is no help anywhere coming anytime soon. So he abandons the truck and to find shelter and the the people he works for end up firing him because he left the truck. And so the whole case went up the courts, the federal courts, and it gets to Neil Gorsuch, and I think it was a panel, and Neil Gorsuch rules that the employer was right and justified in firing the employee because he didn't stay with the truck and risk his life uh, uh, just sitting there waiting in a blizzard to protect their company property. So it was basically Gorsuch saying, property over people. I mean, and, and this is and this is what the court is. So, I mean, yes, it's bad that Amy Cooney Barrett got confirmed. Yes, it's bad that she's on the bench. But overall, let's be real now. The decisions that have come out from the Supreme Court in recent history, as well as just in since their inception, it's... But definitely in modern history, it's hard to make the case that this is some sort of legitimate court. Now, I already said how these, the, the corporations basically buy the seat and whoever the donors approve get, get put on the seat. But then they rule in that way on the courts, too. So then what's like, I don't get why people I mean, I understand why people are hesitant to call the court what it is, but. Because, you know, you can't really have a functioning democracy without a functioning court system, legal system. So it's a big deal for some people to call into question the legitimacy of the court. But like I've done on this show with this issue and any other issue, I think it's just best to keep it real. And there's no point in sugarcoating it and pretending that it's something that it's not because the problem still exists. But when you're doing that, you're just trying to cover it up and sweep it under the rug and pretend like everything is just fine when it's not. So I'm going to say it how it is. Of course, basically illegitimate from the their rulings on money and politics, saying that that co- donations, that, that millionaires and, and corporations are entitled to, to unlimited donations to politicians because that's free speech. Really? Money equals free speech. It's not bribery. Oh, no, no, no. They rule it's not bribery. It's just free speech. And you have decisions like that and, and, and many others, uh, um, Bush versus Gore, where it's just clearly political and they're just using the courts as a tool, as a means to an end. So bit of a tangent there. Point remains. The Supreme Court, it, it's... Its biggest issue is that it sides with corporations over workers, over customers and consumers, over the public. And Amy Coney Barrett, as bad as she is, isn't really going to, isn't really changing that dynamic of the court. So I think I'll end this video. I'm going to do a separate video about um, how the the Democrats shit the bed here and um, the hysteria coming from a lot of people on the left over this but all in this video here mitch mcconnell donald trump stacked the supreme court yet another corporatist on the court and like i said 
she'll just it'll be just another judge another justice that comes down on the side against workers and and the public and in favor of corporations that's basically what the supreme court is now and it's been that way my whole life it's just instead of it being a 5-4 conservative court it's going to be 6-3 conservative court 